Why is the Indian airline industry difficult to disrupt? The clouds of recession have still not cleared the sky. Like every other industry, Indian airline industry has also suffered major losses. However, the developmental government policies offer a ray of hope for the aviation industry. Despite continuous efforts, there hasn't been a single good day for Indian Airlines. Recently, the bankruptcy of Gophers brings our attention back to the declining plight of Indian airline companies. What do you think can be the reasons behind this? Of all things, I believe there are huge fixed costs that must be incurred. Fixed charges form a greater portion of the overall cost of the airline companies. They range from the cost of leasing or buying the aircraft to regular maintenance costs and staff costs. And on the other hand, airline industries cannot do mass scale layoffs or else the employees would go on strikes. There is also a certain level of government intervention if the company sacks several employees. Secondly, we have the issue of low profit margins. The recent data showed an increase in the number of travelling Indians, but still the profit margin of the companies has not increased. Along with fixed costs, inflation of fuel prices, low ancillary charges, sensitivity to market events, we also have aggressive competition and price wars that drag them down. Moving on, people in India are price sensitive. So to expand sales, companies have to enter a price war to attract more people. This means lower prices than the competitor, thus leading to low profit margins. And of course, there are increased taxes by the government. Airline companies have to pay charges to the airports for using their services like airport charges, landing charges, parking charges, etc. Aviation fuel in India has one of the highest levels of tax levied in the whole world. Some other reasons may include restrictions on rising air tariffs by the government. Whenever companies have charged exorbitant airfares, it has led to people raising an issue and leading to government intervention and reduced prices. But the scenario overseas is different. There are profitable airlines providing quality services to travelers. Let us look at two such international companies and the strategies which made them profitable. Firstly, there is the Delta Airlines. They had bought and leased cheap second-hand planes which consumed more fuel when there was a dip in aviation fuel prices. Smart, isn't it? They used these aircrafts and started serving new routes which were already demanded by people. And in addition to all of that, they even made their employees stakeholders in the company. Every year, the company shares 10% of its earnings with the employees. And this acts as a motivation for the employees to serve passengers with the best hospitality. And as when the company earns well, the employees earn well. The second profitable airline we all know is the Ryan Airlines. They have a low-cost business model and the company has always focused on being cost-efficient. This allows it to charge less fare than the passengers as compared to its competitors. The company manages its operations efficiently which allows it to be timely and hence they have reduced costs which helps when competing with competitors. Additionally, their strong ancillary revenue forms huge part of their profits. The company follows a different model for earning. It has a low base fare and high ancillary charges. Ancillary charges here include baggage fees, seat selection charges, late arrival penalty, etc. However, the strategies of these airlines cannot be applied in the Indian economic environment because of its price sensitive consumers and intervention by the government. So instead, the government came up with the Uran scheme. Uran initiative or Uridesh Ka Aam Nagrik initiative was launched in 2016. It facilitates the usage of airlines by the normal citizens of the country. It aimed at enhancing connectivity to Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities of the country by making air travel more affordable. It also included the revival of 50 airports in the first three years by spending 4,500 crores and had planned for building 31 new airports. Half of the seats on Iran flights are offered by subsidized fares. Initiatives such like this and positive economic indicators point towards positive prospects for the industry in the future. Indian airline companies have placed orders for more than 1,100 aircraft 
Airports have doubled in the last decade from 74 to 147 and the Indian aviation makes up for 5% of the GDP. With positive changes like this, we can finally hope to see bigger, brighter and better aviation industry in India. This is all for now. For more such content, tune into Insightful by EP Log Media.